At this point, it was five in the morning. We'd been arguing all night and we hadn't slept. I had to catch a flight at 6.20 a.m. out of Newark Airport to Los Angeles for a show I was doing that night. At this point, I'm overtired and I'm angry and I'm late. I'm stuffing my things in my roller suitcase and I walk out of our apartment. It's 5 a.m., that part of the morning before the Earth even exists, before they program the Matrix or whatever. You walk out of your apartment, part of the road isn't even there. There's a guy with a laptop going, we need a road, step! What's the code for building, tank? You know, you get to the airport, the news hasn't even started yet. It's just an anchor looking around like, what are you up to? And I get to the kiosk and I print up my ticket and I bring it to the security lady and she looks at it and she goes, well, that ain't your gate. Like, I guess they changed the gate, but the way she said it was as though I had participated in the decision to change the gate. I was like, I was not involved in this process. I wasn't even CC'd. Like, as though I had gone to the kiosk and been like, B-22, like hell, I'm flying out of B-22. And then I'd Photoshop my own ticket printed it up and been like, this is where I'm going. You know, I'm not that aggressive as a traveler. So I was like, well, where is this gate? She goes, it's in another terminal. You got to take a tram. And she points to the tram and I start walking my roller suitcase and I hear her say, and you better run. Like, I guess I was late at that point. So I start running and the roller suitcase does not enjoy running. The roller suitcase is like, I don't want to run. <laughs> Have wheels and I was like I don't want to run either but this is what we have to do I tell you what when we get to the hotel I'll walk you in circles for a few hours and I, I get to the tram and it has that feature where it says how many minutes before the next tram arrives and it says zero minutes I was like perfect that's exactly how long I wanted to wait but the tram's riding away I was like that's negative one minutes and then it says 10 minutes and I'm experiencing that psychological downward spiral like, oh great, I'm gonna miss my flight and then I'm gonna miss every flight from now on and then I'm gonna miss my family reunion and then I'm not gonna have a family and then I'm gonna be a crack whore. And it's like all of a sudden, I'm a crack whore but it's just because I missed this one flight and I can feel the cancer forming in my body in real time. I get on the next tram 10 minutes later and I run to the gate and I'm sweaty and I'm out of breath but I'm on time. And I'm so relieved that I sit down in the chair at the gate and I fall asleep. <laughs> and I wake up to the sound of the door shutting. I jump up and the door is closed and I am on the sad side of the door. The happy side has an airplane and a pilot. The sad side is me and the Cinnabon lady. <laughs> Normally, I'd be very excited if it were just me and the Cinnabon lady. I'm a big fan of pastries the size of a baby that have enough calories for a year. I think that's an effective use of time. But in this instance, I needed someone who could communicate with the people on the plane. And the Cinnabon lady is not very well connected in the airline community. I was like, do you know these people? She was like, all I know is the white stuff goes on in the Cinnabon. <laughs> You ever been on a flight and you catch yourself watching somebody else's movie for way too long? <laughs> I'm watching Frozen with no sound for 40 minutes. <laughs> it's in front of my own headrest, but I'm like, I like this version. I'm already emotionally invested. I hate flying Southwest the most, just because they're like the funny airline. Everybody who works there thinks they're a stand-up comedian which is aggravating as a stand-up comedian, <laughs> how easy the crowd is on a plane. It's very hard to do this for a living, but on a Southwest flight, people just f***ing give it up for anything. They'll be like, it is time, we're gonna turn off all iPhones, Blackberries, and Blueberries, and people are like, oh, 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 that's not a real phone model. Oh, it's a fruit. Oh, Richard Pryor up there. <laughs> Why are you a flight attendant? <laughs> Follow your dreams. <laughs> I always see families traveling together at the airport and like parents will have their little kids pulling these tiny Spider-Man suitcases <laughs> that are like this big. Just pack for your kid. <laughs> Why does a toddler need his own suitcase? I just picture this little kid waking up in the morning in his race car bed, like, no, oh, no, I overslept my flight to LaGuardia. 
Fuck. Let's see, I'll eat my Ninja Turtles. A scoop of ice cream, it's a long flight, I might get hungry. Tell the shuttle to wait for me. Tell the shuttle to wait. He's just sitting in the shuttle with a bag of Cheerios, like, that was close. A little too close for comfort, you know? <laughs> Isn't it crazy how much money we spend on plane tickets just to get treated like shit every step of the way? I had to fly one time, the airport was dead, nobody was there, and they had that maze thing. So I just, I duck under, and this woman goes, excuse me, sir, sir, you need to go around. And I'm like, nobody's here, just let me do this. You need to go around. So I'm like, <laughs> This, this is what you wanted? <laughs> this is the battle that you've chosen for today? To watch a grown man go through a maze? Ooh, a block of cheese. Mm. 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 Mm.